Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119, also HardbachElectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. So I have an Ameritron AL811 amplifier here and for repair. It's Friday, so taking care of this, Harbach kits, and I'm done until Monday. So I'm going to go through it, do everything that needs to be done. It's getting a new set of Pentalab 572 B tubes. are awesome tubes, awesome company. At 811s, they were severely overheated. So I'm going to do the bias mod, fix the straps for the parasitic board, put in new SO239s from Max Gain Systems, compress socket clips, add gas discharge tubes at the socket, uh, remove the metal oxide variators, and uh, clean the rotary switches, do everything else that needs to be done. So I'm going to get to work, and I'll see you guys soon, and I'll go over everything when it's all done. See you guys in a bit. Please like, share, and subscribe, and also do the 10 meter mod. Okay, see you soon with the completed Ameritron AL811. Okay, so customer wanted to see it working on 40 meters. So there are the settings. The frequency I'm on. Okay, 1KW slug. Bird 43 with the PEP kit on. Radio set to roughly 50 watts or so. Audio hello, audio hello, 600 right there, 600. Audio hello, hello, hello. Audio hello, audio hello, 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 hello. Tut 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 tut. Audio hello, 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 hello. Tut 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 tut. And it's working as it should. So I'm going to finish testing the. I always start 160, work my way up, and I stop at the band. The customer wants the video on, so I'll complete the testing, and then when that's all set, I will, as long as it tests okay, I'll take the cover off, and I'll shut it off, let the tubes cool off, unplug it, and I'll take the cover off and show you everything in, I did on the inside. So, stay tuned. See you guys soon. With the completed Maritron AL811 amplifier, I'm going to show you everything I did real quick. Okay, so, the brand new gas discharge tubes at the base of the socket. Did not have any at all. This was an older one. So one per side of the filament. I replaced the leads going to the parasitic board. The straps, they're nice and flexible all the way up to the board. Removed the metal oxide varistors from the rear board. No longer needed. Cleaned the input rotary switch with deoxycold. Cleaned the band switch, rotary switch with deoxycold. Put a longer screw in the base of the plate choke. Put a longer screw in the top of the plate choke. Place the SO239s with new ones from Max Gain Systems. So he had said the uh, customer told him that the factory refurbished this at some point. I don't know if I really believe that the factory worked on it. I mean, there were some really bad solder joints. I touched up on them on both sides of the board. I did not completely redo them, strip them, and all that. That would have been a lot of work. So it's all good. I, I touched them up, and uh, I seriously doubt the factory did that. And then... Uh, Looked like someone changed the SO239s with, I don't know, they look similar to the ones from the factory, which are which are not good. They always end up failing. The spring tension just ends up, they, they spread, and then you don't have a good connection on the PL259, and that's a disaster for any amp. You never want an open on the output of an amp. So, they had mismatched hardware. Two of them had number four screws, and the other ones had, and then the other one had number six, but they were both mismatched length, so... I cut down new 632 screws, installed them, and they usually have number four. So I just reused the stock screws if they all match, but I uh, ended up just cutting down some number six screws and used kept nuts. So that's nice and tight. That's all set. Did the bias modification, zip tied all the wiring, tied it over here. So one of the bleeders was open, so that took out the cap. That doesn't usually happen with the black resistors, they're bleeder slash equalization resistors. So when that opened, you had more voltage across the cap that had no load across it with the resistor, so it took out one of these caps. So I replaced all four with brand new Kemet ones. They're better caps. For brand new resistors, you always have to replace the resistors. Always, always, always. So that's all set. And uh, I think that's about it. So got new fuses, and I tuned some of the uh, input circuit coils. Three of them were off the, the slugs inside of them. So I've been providing these uh, for I don't know, about a 
month or so now, Penta has been sending me their premium 572, and he, they said I'll be the exclusive source for them for a bit. So, if a customer wants one of these premium tubes, uh, I guess the price is going to be a hair more. So you'll have to talk to Penta. I make nothing, honestly make nothing. I they, they send me tubes, they trust me, they usually send me 20 to 40 572s at a time just so I have them here because I work on so many amplifiers and then I can test the customer's amp with their tube tubes. Just gosh forbid there was an issue, rather it happened here than at their house, but I haven't had a problem in a long time. But And 3 5 Z's just get drop shipped to the customer. So I've not had any problems with these. Customers have not said anything negative about them. They have the Penta logo engraved. They have gold plated pins. They have a aluminum anodized base cap on there and then the the connection on the top of the tube is also gold plated. So just uh, something to think about. So uh, Penta also told me that I could tell you guys that it's actually exciting that they bought the Amprex, I guess the name, the designs, I don't know. But they said they, they bought Amprex. So now they're going to be providing the Amprex version of the 3500Z. So you can see anyone that knows these tubes can, you know, they know that you know, these have the thicker discs inside for the anode versus the other ones available. See how much thinner they are? I'm not saying anything bad about these, I'm just telling you that these will be available. So, that's very exciting. Um, but, so if you have any, if you have an amplifier you need repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. It's been a long day. I've had all sorts of stuff to do today, so. Luckily, it is Friday. I am done. Done, 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 done. So... Websites are amprepairguy.com, also harbachelectronics.com. Please keep the amps coming. I love it. I'm going through them as quick as I can. Still wait times about two weeks. Um, I just, you know, I get things done. In and out. Okay, so I hope everyone has a great weekend, and I will see you guys next week. I have an L4B to do. I have another... Another two Ameritron amps here, uh, more in the way, more getting dropped off. So, again, thank you uh, very much for watching. Please hit the like and su subscribe and share buttons. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll uh, see you guys next week, 73.